Now, one of the biggest issues when trying to play any kind of retro games on your Nvidia Shield or your Fire Stick is always how do I actually source or find these ROMs to play? Now, you could search online, you could maybe find some websites that host some of these files, but then it becomes a case of how do I download them to transfer them across to my device? Do I use a USB drive? Do I use something else? But it just makes the process long-winded. Now, wouldn't it just be amazing if you could actually browse an entire library of retro games, a bit like Netflix, but for, you know, classic games and any game you want to play, you could just click on that game and that game will be instantly streamed directly onto your device. Wouldn't that be something? Well, as we can see in the background here, we have a big list of games. Let's say I want to play this one here. I click on that. We can see I now get a really nice summary of the game. We can see some of the artwork, some of the disc info. And if I click on launch and within one second, that should now start. And we can see it's done exactly that. So if I press start and there we have it, guys, we are now playing this classic game on our Nvidia Shield. This game was just streamed directly to my device and I can now start enjoying all of this great classic retro content. So in this video today, let me show you how you can also follow these steps on your Nvidia Shield or your Fire Stick, which will give you access to a massive, and I really do mean massive library of retro games that you can play with one click. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Okay, so to follow this process on your Nvidia Shield or your Fire Stick, we need to have just two things installed. Firstly is this application here, so you can get the latest version from the Play Store, and you also need to install a custom repository, which I'll show you in just a second. Now, as a quick summary of this video, firstly, we'll download that custom repository. We'll then open up this application, and I'll show you how you can configure your controller. I'm gonna use an Nvidia Shield controller, but really any Bluetooth controller or USB controller that you have. I'll show you how you can configure that first. We'll then install that custom repository into this application. And then through that plugin, I'll show you how you can access a massive library of retro games. And then lastly, I'll show you how you can optimize those emulators to not only give you just the best visuals, but also give you the best performance on your device. So, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to download that custom repository. Now, to do that, let's go over to Downloader. And let's navigate to my website. And guys, if you have any issues downloading via Downloader, because there's always questions in every comments that you wanna try and use Downloader, I get an error that downloading is not supported. If you get that kind of message, please have a look at the pinned comment because I will leave a link there on how you can fix this issue. Uh, but for now, let's go to my website, which is just bit.ly forward slash tduk. That's me and the numbers 2019. Let's type that in and click on go. Now, when you get to my website, you will see there's a dedicated section for tutorials. So let's click on that now and let's click on the hamburger menu and let's click on tutorials and let's scroll down. And by the time this video has gone out, the top link in the tutorials will be how you can play retro games on your Nvidia Shield or your Fire Stick. So let's click on that now. And here is that tutorial. Let's scroll down. And we can see here, we have two things that we need. We need to download the Zach Morris repo. And let me just say a massive thanks to Zach Morris, who's actually created this amazing add-on. So definitely all credit is due to him. So we need to download this repo here and also install this application. So this you can get from the Play Store if it's available. And if you don't have access to the Play Store, you can click on this link and this will then download this application directly to your device. But as I've already installed this on this device, I'm just going to download the repo. So let's click on this link here. Let's scroll down and we're looking for this green download button. So let's click on that. And this will then download a zip file directly to your device. And we can then use a zip file in the other application. Now, in case you're wondering why I'm not actually naming the application is because YouTube right now seems to be demonetizing all sorts of different stuff. And the application beginning with K seems to be one of those trigger words, so which is why I'm not gonna say it in this video, but we'll just call it the application for now. Okay, so we've downloaded the zip file. We're not gonna touch it here. I can just click on done. Let's now press the home key and let's now open up that application for the first time. Here it is. Let's click on that. Okay, so we can see we are starting it for the first time. Let's click on continue. Click on allow. Okay, so here is now a clean installation of this application. Now, that doesn't mean that if you already have this application installed, you can't follow these steps, but I'm just trying to show you if you've never installed this application, these are the things you need to do. So the very first thing we're going to do is go over to settings, which is a cogwheel here. Let's click on that. 
and then click on system and here where it says input if you click on that and scroll to the right we can see we have an option here to configure attached controllers so i'm going to demonstrate on an nvidia shield controller but if you want to use maybe an xbox controller or any other third party controller this is where you'd actually configure the button so let's open that up and we can see that the default controller it's using is based on an xbox 360 controller now in terms of configurations the only buttons i'm going to configure are actually the start button the back button and the guide button. Now the start button is obviously used by most emulators to actually start the game. The back button in some games actually adds a virtual coin and in the other games on the other consoles or the other emulators it's actually the guide button. So for me to configure the start button I'm just going to press A on that. I'm actually going to map this trigger button for start so I'll press A first so you can see it says press the start button so I'm going to press this. Now for the back button I'm going to use this one here when I actually has the back arrow. And for the guide button, I'm going to use this one here. Okay, and the rest I'm just going to leave as is because as far as I can tell, we don't need to map those manually ourselves. So that's all I'm going to change for now. So let's click on OK. Let's press the back button. And we're now going to install that custom repository. So to do that, let's go over to add-ons. Let's go to install from zip file. Now if you see this message, just click on settings. And enable this option here, unknown sources and click on yes. Now let's press the B button to go back. We can now click on install from zip file. Let's click on external storage. And this will now show you the file system of your Nvidia Shield or whichever device you're doing this on. And because we used downloader to download the actual zip file, I'm now going to go into the downloader folder, which basically has all of the things you downloaded via the application. Let's click on that. And let's click on a zip file. The reason why we see two is because I was testing this process earlier on today. Let's click on this. Okay, we get that message there. Let's now click on this. And we can see there is the new repository there. Let's click on that. And let's go to the last option. And here is the Internet Archive Games Launcher. Let's click on that. And let's click on Install. Now this will have some dependencies as we can see in the screen here. But if I click on OK, this will then go ahead and automatically install all of the dependencies that this application needs. Let's give that a second. Here we can see at the back that those dependencies are being automatically installed and that's now all done. Now when you see this message, this is actually asking about YouTube so we can say no to that. Okay, so that's now installed successfully. Let's open that up and we now want to go over to configure. So this is actually the key part of this entire process that we need to properly configure this so we can now access that entire retro games library. Let's open that up. Okay, so in general, let's go to the right. So these are all some of the default options so we can leave these um, as they are for now. But the thing that we're looking for and here we can see that the cache size is set to zero, which does say current game only. Now, effectively, what that means is when you are browsing your you know, large retro games library, any game that you want to play, as soon as you click on that game, that game will be streamed to your emulator that you're using. So if you're playing a Mega Drive game or an arcade game, that game will be downloaded into that emulator. So there really is no concern about, you know, do I have enough storage to hold these games? Because pretty much any game you want to play, it will be streamed to your device. Now, of course, if you want to, you can actually change this uh, cache size. If I click on that, and let's say, for example, we set this to one gig. And this means you now have one gig of that temporary storage you can use to download and play your games. Especially if you are playing the same games again and again, then it doesn't really make sense to you know, keep on downloading them unless you have some storage issues. OK, so we have one gig of that temporary uh, storage buffer and uh, let's press left. And let's go down to the setup wizard and just make sure here you've got external launcher set as the retro player. Now in this video, I'm only going to cover the built-in emulators into this application because I want to make sure you guys can have the most easiest and simplest way to enjoy retro games on your device. However, I'm working on another video which will allow you to use RetroArch with this application. Now the main benefit of using RetroArch is the fact that you can access a lot more systems or you can play a lot more emulators with RetroArch versus this. And if you guys want to see that video, leave me a comment below and make sure you are subscribed. OK, so for now, let's click on Execute Setup Wizard. We can say no to this. Let's click on OK. And this will now go ahead and update all of the game settings, update all of the emulator settings and also download some of the other components that it needs. So let's give that a second. OK, so we're now ready to use the retro player. So let's click on OK. Let's open that up. OK, let's scroll down and click on Agree. OK, so when you start this application, this is what you'll see. So you have the options to browse via all this, via category. You can access a bunch of favorites. You can also search for something if you want to do that. 
and you also have a random place. So let's just go for a category. And let's say we're interested in uh, 8 bit for now. And here we can just see we have a, a massive list of different consoles. Uh, let's just try this one here, completely random. Uh, let's just go for one big list. All right, and let's just do, let's do this one here. So when I click on anything, you get to see a nice summary of the game. You get to see some of the artwork. Uh, you could view a trailer if you want to. But what we're interested in is game streaming. So let's click on that. And we can see within one second, it's actually downloaded that game for us. And it's now asking you which emulator do you want to use to actually play that file. So let's just go for the first one here. And this will now download the emulator directly to your device. So we can see pretty much everything just becomes download on demand. So wherever you want to play, wherever you want to stream, anything you click on, it will then be made available for you. Okay, let's click on the A button. And here we are, guys. We're now playing this game, which was downloaded directly to my device. Uh, okay, that's working good there. Do I go this way? And if you want to quit, let's press the select button and select exit. And let's go for best of arcade. And here we have it, guys. If you look on the top left, we can see just in this particular list here, we have over 4,859 games. And all of these you can play just with one click. I mean, that's the issue when you have just so many games. What do you actually play? Ah, oh, good old Captain America. Let's click on that. And we can see some really nice artwork there. We can see there's just two buttons, one for attack, one for jump. Let's click on launch and we can see that starts downloading straight away. And in fact, guys, just while we're waiting, if you are enjoying these kind of tutorials, if you want to see more tutorials for the NVIDIA Shield Pro or the Fire Stick or the Fire TV Cube, then please do like this video and also think about subscribing because that really is the best way to help out my channel. Thank you. Okay, so we can now choose one of these uh, emulators. And here we are now playing this classic arcade game on our NVIDIA Shield Pro. Uh, uh, take that. How do I throw my shield? Uh, let's try some 16-bit stuff. Let's go into that. And again, let's click on launch. This will then instantly download that game to our device, as we can see. And we then get to choose which emulator you want to use. So uh, let's go for this one here. Okay, so let me now show you how you can actually optimize some of these graphics, because we can see that it does look quite pixelated. Let's press the select button. Let's go for, let's go to settings. And we can see we now have the video filter mode. So let's click on that. Okay, so you have the default setting, which is set to nearest neighbor, and we also have bilinear. So if I click on that, so you can see it does go a little bit blurry, but it completely smooths out those pixels. So if you're looking for slightly finer graphics or smoother graphics, then you may actually prefer this. So let's leave it as that. And we can also adjust the stretch mode. So if I click on that, so we can see this is normal. That's stretched out a bit. Or you can also make it full screen. So depending on your monitor or your screen or your setup, you may want to change that. So I'm going to leave mine as a stretch. So it's a little bit more than this one. Okay, so we've changed the filter and we've changed the stretch mode. Let's back out of that. Let's see how that looks now. And we can see that does look a lot more smoother and more of the screen is taken up with the actual graphics. <laughs> and it's working great, guys. So, and we saw, I mean, this particular list had nearly 5,000 games and that's just one of the lists. There's just literally so many different lists, so many different collections, just pages and pages of classic retro games. And as we saw, all of them can be one click downloaded directly onto your device and you can start playing them straight away. So that's all for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like. And as mentioned, I'm working on a part two of this video, which will focus on some of the advanced emulators like N64, like PlayStation. So if you guys want to check that out, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Um, other than that, I hope everybody um, is at home, is staying safe. Uh, do leave me a comment below what you thought about this video. And I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.